It is a highly efficient weapon that can be used against most other melee weapons. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. The six foot bow might be the most widely used weapon in all of the Kobudo arsenal. This is normal, as it is often the first weapon a beginning Kobudo practitioner gets their hands on. As Kobudo can be translated as the old martial art, you could theorize that humans first started fighting with weapons before they started using their hands and feet. I mean, it went something like this. Our prehistoric forefathers needed to defend themselves against big predators and other humans, right? So it was always more beneficial to learn how to use a weapon to do this. As we don't have claws or imposing teeth, what was the easiest weapon to find? Right, a stone to throw. Well, that and of course a tree branch. Because once you throw away your weapon, you're unarmed again. Fast forward many millennia and you see hundreds of renditions of that same stick in swords, spears, halberds, but also Kali sticks, nunchucks and of course the six foot bow. It is a highly efficient weapon that can be used against most other melee weapons. They say it's nearly impossible to parry a bow attack when it's dealt by a master, as it can be used so quickly and since it gives the wielder a lot of range it's easy to use to keep your attackers at bay. In traditional Okinawan law enforcement it was even the weapon that was wielded by the lower ranking officers. Higher ranking officers would wield a Sai. I have personally started practicing with this weapon about a year ago using Yesse Enkam's fantastic Kobodo Mastery program. You'll find the link to that in the description below. As it stands, I am fortunate to know some of the world's greatest, or at least most knowledgeable, Kobodo practitioners today. There is of course Yesse Enkam himself. You can see him here performing a part of one of his favorite bow kata, Suyoshi no Kom. Andreas Quast who is also a true fountain of knowledge when it comes to anything even remotely connected to karate and is a great Kobodo student. And last, but not least, the great Patrick McCarthy, a living legend in the karate world. And here's a little tidbit from one of his many instructional videos that are available for purchase if you're interested. I'll leave a link down below to some of these guys' awesome material. Now, I did say I also train a little bojutsu bo myself, and I promise the next video in the dojo, I will show you what I can do with the bow so far. I'm not afraid of embarrassing myself on camera for all you guys. Worst thing that can happen is someone might try to teach me something, right? So, how does training Kobudo and specifically bojutsu improve your karate? Well, that isn't a difficult question, since both are related. You use many of the same stances in both arts, but that's not all. As you get better at bojutsu, you start to recognize movements you would also use in karate. But as you are using an object with a fixed size, you are obligated to place your hands in the right places. In short, it increases your grasp of karate, both figuratively and literally. As I'm not showing you any of my own awkward flailing around with this ancient wooden weapon, allow me to guide you to some other awkward material of mine, namely a playlist of all Wadokata as performed by myself. <laughs> Please be gentle in the comments. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching. Chuck Norris has a grizzly bear rug laid out on his family room floor. Oh, the bear isn't dead, it's just afraid to move.